Hello, Namaste, good evening, everyone. I am Avni Kataka, your host for the evening. And the guest, oh my God, how do I invite it? Intense, profound, prolific, and avid. I guess words fall short for him. So today the guest for us is Captain Amey Vilas Kochrekar. He has served Indian Army for seven long years and he was commissioned in the Army Air Defense Missile Regiment. He served his tenure on the Western borders with Pakistan. Wow, now he must be having many, many, many team stories for us with this. Also, Captain has been awarded for his exemplary service during rescue operation of 100 plus civilians in major fire tragedy in Gwalior. He is an alumni of IIM Lucknow and he has an avid experience of corporate sector. And then now we all know, I would say Mumbai knows him rather than more than Mumbai, around Mumbai, Maharashtra knows him for unfurling his wings in the field of holistic sports education, which is such a crucial thing in today's age. So let us learn more about how do we go around digital detox for our children what is the importance of holistic sports and sports education in the life of a child and how do parents get inspired through this so let us all warmly warmly and very proudly call upon captain amai kochrekar uh, thank you miss only for such a profound introduction uh, not that great a person but you know few few people like me are probably based uh, to get to do what we really love to and that's what I call my blessings from is I still get to that's, do what I uh, really love to do from that place. That's, that's absolutely kind of you Captain <laughs> because the, the moment I read your introduction I was like wow how would I how would I talk to him but then no, that, that's, that's literally very I think kind today's, of today's, today's show would more or less be uh, from the parent side and from, from the children's side than probably talking on the army and their experiences because that would otherwise take about three four hours minimum. Oh yes, and and we would have some, we would do it some other time obviously because we love Absolutely. listening to stories and I guess many of our lovely parents have already joined in. So captain, the first thing that um, I would rather everyone would like to know that you have had such an amazing and very pragmatic and profound career uh, with the army. Then you went into the this intense uh, corporate career as well. So you know nicks and knacks of everything. And then how did suddenly Profos came? How, how did you thought about getting into Profos? Or, or I would also like to add a small thing to it. While telling us about Profos, can you just let the parents know what is holistic sports? OK. Uh... Good question that you ask here. Why why this profos? So let me probably start from a very basic of uh, what we call it a profos. The tagline of profos, which is my company, we founded that in 2015. The tagline of profos itself says professionalism of forces into sports. Right. That's what profos stands for. And profos started working from 2015 onwards in holistic sports education. That is covering all the aspects of sports education uh, for K-12 segment of schools. So we started with schools. We still do not have any of our private academies anywhere. We work with all the K-12 segment of schools to enhance their entire sports education. Why did it start? Again, there is a story, a small story to it. In fact, uh, you would really, uh, be, be a little shocked to know that uh, I, 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 I mean, uh, having studied in Mumbai, the entire education in Mumbai, uh, from 4th standard to 10th standard, only I didn't play a single sport. And I didn't oh. miss it as well because uh, my school had only one ground known as Shivaji Park. And the school was uh, more or less uh, or rather completely interested in cricket. Unfortunately, till today, I cannot play that game well. Uh, to, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And I guess okay. it is very such such a good uh, point to discuss also that uh, exactly. sometimes uh, we, we see that the only one sport is given that many movies are made on it rather that uh, that's, only one or two sports that's, are highlighted. That's a different story altogether. That's a case study that is taught in sports management colleges nowadays where uh, we, we teach typically. Anyway, so uh, the, I didn't miss it as well because my uh, house was another 35 kilometers away from school. So my entire time used to go in transportation and school and school. 
However, I think the, the when I was seventh and eighth standard kid, I decided to join forces uh, pretty clearly. And after tenth, I happened to get selected in one of the prestigious uh, military colleges of Maharashtra, known as Services Preparatory Institute. Now, SPI Aurangabad was one such thing where playing every single game was mandatory. That is where I picked up team games. That is where I picked up uh, individual games like boxing and all. And those two years changed a complete personality. So somewhere I could clearly realize what impact sport has on any individual personality. We talk about life skills. We talk about everything. That's all is practically given on that. We'll probably cover that also later. But I think somewhere uh, at the back of my mind, when I was that young, I think I decided when my next generation will be born, I'm not going to put him into a school which only focuses on academics and does not have an infrastructure and etc. So uh, when when uh, fast forward another 15 years or 20 years later, uh, when I was uh, I when I served in Indian Army later on after graduation etc. And uh, when my child was born and when he was due for his school admissions in Mumbai, by the time I had completed my short service commission in Army. I selected a school which had a good sports infrastructure, uh, synthetic courts of basketball and lawn tennis and all. Though my child was pretty young, and I'm talking about 2009-10 was the time when my, my child was pretty young. I was working in corporate that time. He was pretty young to perform in any of the sports, but I was not getting to hear any story from anyone for that matter from any of the school teams. So that intrigued me a little more to find out what is going on. I mean, I thought probably the infrastructure would be a crux. It started a research right there. And four or five things came in pretty clearly from the perspective is every school today has got one or two or three B teachers, which are BPED and MPED qualified. What is taught to them in BPED and MPED, that is Bachelor of Physical Education or Master of Physical Education, is the general uh, dimensions of, mm -hmm. of, of the sports field, the refereeing rules, the more uh, nitigate rules and all. Uh, the, and these guys then later on join the P teachers as P teachers. When we did a dipstick analysis of these colleges who are giving these uh, degrees as BPED and MPED, a uh, little more shocking truth came in and less than 3% of them had played a game or two at national level. Now imagine oh. we are expecting a PE teacher who is supposed to train sports in schools, yeah. not played himself at national level. This is the scenario in most of the schools. And why was this happening or why does it still happen? is none of our educational boards, when we talk about ICSC, CBSC, or for that matter, Cambridge, or a state also, none of our educational boards today set a compliance saying that a sports coach should be a national level coach. They only talk about BPED and MPED. And when there is no compliance, Ooh. it doesn't make a business sense for any of the school. right? And I guess least of us know this. Yes, that's what I said. That that came in the research part. That is where we started uh, meeting principals, starting to know more where, 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 what, why is the gap. And obviously a good national level player who is a coach would demand a salary which will not fit into a budget when it is not complied for uh, for right. the school. And that's why it was not making sense. Uh, the second thing that came in, say, for example, uh, given the benefit of doubt that the PE teacher has been or would be a good basketball national level player. But when he joins as a PE teacher for a school, he is told to select a football team. He is told to select table tennis players also. He is told to train cricket team as well, So, which are beyond his own individual competencies. Uh, third and foremost perspective is the teacher to student ratio, which is well maintained inside the classrooms, right? When it comes yeah. to sports round, sports. entire fifth standard will come together or entire sixth standard will come together. So what is maintained within a classroom, which is 1 is to 20 or 1 is to 30 or 1 is to 40, whatever it could be. It is very feasibly overlooked. Uh, it is generally gone to 1 is to 100 typically or even beyond that. And it, it is beyond any human capacity to teach those many children on the, uh, on the ground. And ground teaching is a different thing. So this is where I thought we must do something about it. If there's a gap increasing, uh, we are not teaching sports uh, the way it should be taught at the school level. And what can I do uh, or what can we do? Interestingly, at the same time, in 2010, we had a disaster in uh, India with Commonwealth Games. And uh, being in being organized in India at uh, Delhi level and all, and after that, uh, a good mandate was given to Anstan Young, which is one of the top four consulting firms, to find out what went wrong when. Anstan Young, ENY came up with a very detailed report in 2012, uh, which was covering all these aspects of what is uh, you know what which are the high impact sports India should focus on, what would be the coaches requirement at district and even Tessil yeah. level and all at the grassroots level and also it all it all gave a combined uh, strength or it all gave a validation to what was going on in our research in our mind and i think by 2014 15 we were ready to launch that company we started off with two schools in india 
in 2015 today we are standing with more than 60 schools in india with uh, wow. when considering their uh, entire sports education just a bit of achievements of sports if i may boast of uh, for professors mm-hmm. uh, barring the two years of pandemic time uh, which uh, no no uh, competitions could get organized by india so if i consider five years of operational time of professors Uh, we are standing at three national medals in fencing, three national medals in uh, skating, three national uh, trophies, team trophies in hockey, uh, more than forty-nine state and district trophies, team trophies, and more than six hundred and seventy-two, to be precise, uh, state and district individual medals for for the wow. different sports that we handle. With. This is how the entire journey of Profos start. Profos today has three, four verticals under it, which is pro growth, which is camp ethnosphere. Yeah, otherwise yeah. as well but the main business of profos or as a company lies with the schools to be considering or to be enhancing their sports education uh, throughout the academic year and this is this is so crucial because i i have seen this when i was in school you were saying that you had that one coach we used to uh, the whole school and one pt teacher absolute absolute yeah. you won't be surprised only uh, still the compliance is that cbsc compliance is that over 750 student there should be one pt teacher right 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 this is what the and compliance so, is so i guess i guess we all should thank profos uh, for bringing in this change in the field of uh, sports education because education sector mein to changes people overwhelmingly they are now welcoming ki ha this change that change but i guess when it comes to sport education people are least bothered matlab ha we know that it is important and, for our child when you say about people i think uh, when you say about people how many i think uh, i would rather rename them as parents we as parents are least bothered and there are hmm. two three reasons to it and to be very specific hmm. we have always been shown what is a ladder up after doing after scoring good in academics so you right. score some percentage in 10 you score some percentage in 12 and there you have there after your future is set you get to do either uh, get 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 selected through iitg or get selected through medical examinations or whatever in this case and said that however when it comes to sports nobody could show a ladder up today right. fortunately all those ladder ups are available and this is where profos did at the next thing is we tied up with all top 200 universities of the world through our consulting partner name uh, next gen and uh, all those top 200 uh, world universities have got scholarships for every single sport that we talk about if wow. anybody who has played at oh, national gosh. level and all we can go ahead supporting that player literally getting a scholarship of 50 to 100% even to oh, those and that is where we talk about the ladders of the sports is not about only securing a quota in the government service and probably securing that house and all it right, is all about uh, enhancing your personality as well more importantly uh, what we realize or rather i say what a person like me who didn't play a single sport from first standard to 10th standard and thereafter a complete change in personality what i realize is the very important life skills that we talk about uh, about 25 26 life skills uh, unfortunately none of the textbooks from kindergarten that is from kg to pg to post graduation mm-hmm. none of the textbook none of the subjects are covering those life skills so whether it is determination team play whether it is a perseverance whether it is a will to get up every morning and the most important factor which lies for today's generation is acceptance of failure which okay. is what because we yeah. as parents tend to give them anything and everything to our comfort but the acceptance of failure which is lacking which a sports child who is playing sport at any point of time on the ground would automatically learn because if he loses one match he knows he's got to get up for a second one too and that's the biggest life lesson every like not Absolutely. just a child we also need to learn absolutely we also need to learn uh, but but that's what a sports teaches uh, from from a perspective that's what overall personality development would happen a majority of the part that that happens on the ground which we t- as parent or indian parents tend to overlook many times yeah very true yes and i guess profos is doing it very profoundly Uh, letting us know more about uh, right. this holistic sports and importance and cruciality of sport education for a child like from nursery to i guess like you said pg absolutely yeah. so and, i'll not say very i mean profoundly but we are just trying to uh, do what what we started this company with the best and i think we've been able to get those kind of results so far we are very, very proud to say that one of our first player now would be playing at world championship level the world junior world cup level for fencing right now so right. Next so that's what we are getting prepared for very well said and then uh, like i said ki 
I am personally very when I read about everything about you and the team was discussing at that time. If I, how did then uh, you have so much of experience, so much like pragmatism in your work? How does because we have many 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 parents here and they would they would like to know more about the birth of camp atmosphere from Propos because Propos okay. is about holistic sports education and camp atmosphere. I feel. It is something that I would like to send my kids to as soon as they grow up because we would like to know the age group that you are uh, you are expecting. And then, what is camp atmosphere? How how did the idea came in your mind? Because camps to bahut sare hai. People will say that. So how? Okay. Uh, the 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 word atmosphere itself means uh, give give all the kind of wings to your imagination. right that that's a, that's a google meaning of it but we selected it pretty carefully now camp atmosphere as adventure camp or experiential learning camp started from a very perspective of engaging students during vacation time as i told you we do not run any separate academics with the complete focus of enhancing the sports education but when it was coming towards vacation time uh, let's say summer vacation diwali vacation winter vacation the students were getting home and that is where we thought why disengage them these are the good times that we can probably teach something good to them that is where a birth of camp atmosphere happen of engaging them during the vacation time now why adventure camp or why camp atmosphere i i i i get uh, across this kind of question many a times from a parent uh, simply uh, it is not about giving them exposure about adventure activities i'm sorry i mean camp it is not just an adventure activity camp the camp atmosphere we thought would just focus on taking away every single fear out of a child's mind and that unfortunately cannot be done under the wings and under the ages of parents in meeting so i mean if, if you go as a family to a adventure resort and you start doing something probably in dela or anywhere and your child doesn't want to do you will probably call him back and chalo theek hai nahi karna hai chalo aapko nahi karna hai na nahi karna hai but in camp atmosphere we do not give that choice of not doing an activity and it's a very simple thing a very simple logic behind it only it is uh, our human mind is trained of always selecting the comfortable option i'll not Absolutely. say trained a human mind is generally made that will always select a best comfortable option and when it comes to fear we would always run away from it first because we do not want to face our fears we do not want to overcome it and at the tender age of the children generally not so when it when a child comes to camp atmosphere we know a child would generally have a fear of height somebody would have a fear of water somebody would have a fear of working in team somebody would have a fear of darkness somebody would have a fear of n number of fears child have yeah, because yeah, everybody yeah. is bringing up is different everybody is uh, Uh, house background is different everybody's family background is different so we try and focus entire set of activities through adventure through team activities through everything so that all those fears are faced and a child is not given an option of not conquering it okay so when it comes to i mean if i may just say an example sometimes the child gets stuck at the rappling tower for 2 hours but we ensure that a child will complete that 70 meters of rappling and come back what whatsoever maybe the case and Absolutely. after that we've been getting those kind of positive uh, remarks from all the parents that the first time we saw that what kind of confidence in the parent i think this is where we thought parent camp atmosphere should be taken forward with and that's what next, next level yeah and here here uh, shivali dikshit saxena says that camp atmosphere probably will bring the discipline that we as parents don't exercise at home okay <laughs> yes yeah, certainly certainly to an extent however camp atmospheres are uh, generally are the camps which are 3 days 4 days or 5 days mass at many of the levels level 1 level 2 level 3 kind of camps uh, disciplining something over 3 4 5 days is too difficult disciplining a child over this however we try and uh, make them understand the importance of the discipline when they themselves get up at say 5 5 15 in the morning and they realize that they got extra 2 hours at the hand in 24 hours that itself is a big magic for them for 3 days they are away from every digital screen there is no tv no mobile nothing no video games nothing at all and they then they realize there is a different world out out there from a digital screen altogether and that's where uh, the real world exists when they have to work as a team when they have to work with strangers so yeah. in our camps only specifically sometimes 10 uh, a group of 10 50 students from one school from one standard would enroll or from one society would enroll 
but or or siblings or cousins and everyone together but we ensure that no friends no siblings no cousins are in one in activity group, group together and they have to work oh, wow. along with the strangers and that's how we've been taking it away however when it comes to disciplining a child uh, we have got those kind of feedbacks that once a child was back from the camp i think next day he himself had woken up at 5:30 and he was waking up his parents said chalo utho abhi bahut sara kaam karna hai right <laughs> Right. So, Captain, I have one question here, which says that, sir, what's the age group for the camp? Okay, uh, for basic level camps, uh, for entry level camps, we talk about seven years to seventeen years. For our level okay. two camps, it is nine years and above, typically. Okay, so seven to seventeen. Uh, for Sudha Hunar has asked the question, and seven to seventeen years is for the first level of camp. First level camp, and this is what we prefer. A child should do a three days uh, kind of a first level camp at least. so that he gets an exposure and he gets to conquer the basic fears that he would have then obviously like like what they do in their video games obviously the level goes on increasing oh, yeah. of the top yeah, right? yeah 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 absolutely and then we also had the team had a discussion last night about uh, the questions and all and there was one question from one team member that uh, because see if someone has a i know that camp atmosphere uh, has uh, children girls and boys both but then when it comes to girls it is sometimes uh, the parents overthink about the girl child safety they hesitate many a times agar aap ratio dekh bhi lo so sometimes aisa hota hai na ki uh, a girl child parent hesitates more to send her for such uh, camps for 2 to 3 days uh, they would rather ensure it 2 to 3 times more so what do you want to say about it how do you ensure it to and, your parents and, and, and i think they are they are they are completely right when they are thinking a girl child would always a girl child parent would always have that kind of fear in our mind yeah. considering the kind of situations that happen in our country yeah. typically yeah right right but uh, one thing that we did and i i would say proudly here that in every uh, camp we get about 40 to 45% sometimes as as a 50% participation from the girls now we right. try doing few things is every time in the camp we have a lady instructor along always okay. and mm-hmm. camp atmosphere is the only camp out of all the kind of this camp that you would see in every camp we compulsorily take two or three parent volunteers along and those are moms these are taken on board from a girl's child's perspective only because uh, supposedly say a girl is during a puberty days or has got those four days of period during that time or whatever in that case uh, suddenly during a camp she should have a motherly figure too. secondly the parent volunteers are taken on board to keep a complete check on quality of whatever that we promise because a parent talking to the other parent would have a lot of credibility than the camp atmosphere instructor team talking to a parent and i think this is where we have scaled ourselves to that credibility that nowadays uh, just looking at the reviews and uh, when we get this kind of inquiries my team or rather me also when i talk to parent I said I will not give you one or two or three references of parents. I give you entire list of thousand, two thousand parents. You select any number out of it and ask anyone out of that, so that you we don't become selective. You select any number and you check our credibility. I think that would be more important from that. Yeah, and that uh, is that right approach. Ha, uh, when it comes to stay in the camp, the girls' boys got to stay separate. The girls' rooms got to be closed enough. so that uh, we we are and and uh, so ensuring that all the instructors especially the uh, parent volunteers and all are staying within the complex of the girls where they are staying in and all keeping a complete uh, check on everything all the campuses that we select uh, for our campsites are cctv vigilant i mean every recording everything that is needed for right. any kind of incidents that is also there fortunately so far we haven't come across anything like that great absolutely amazing and then uh, if you had to tell us that how is camp atmosphere different from obviously you have explained it very well but in in short few words just say we have parents who are asking you yes my kids are 17 hmm. so they would definitely they would think of sending the kids uh, to the camp so how is it hashtag #different from agar if it's it's now the summer vacations are coming and i guess the camps uh, will be splurging uh, this time so uh, how is it like how we can what do we expect how is it different from any other camp that i should just send my kids to camp atmosphere okay uh this would probably look like a sales speech out there you ask me a question to uh, probably direction to that anyways but it's not that i would first say i would encourage any parent to send their child to any experiential learning 
cost. Okay. So it could be any cam. It could be cam atmosphere. It could be anything. How do we differentiate from anything else? Is again the way we uh, thought we would step foot in this kind of segment of experiential learning is the very thing that I I said cam atmosphere differs from any other cam. That is no child has ever gone back without completing every single activity which is planned for. So if a child is standing at the starting line of doing a night walk of 500 meters. All alone, deep inside a jungle, cried for three hours. We stood there for three hours uh, in the starting line, but ensure that the child completes so that kind of. Thing. So right. we we give that kind of effort. We give that kind of uh, support. Right. Uh, more importantly, before every camp, we conduct a kind of parent orientation of all the registered parents of the camp. We set our objectives. We set our methodologies pretty clearly that this is what they can expect out of it. Uh, suddenly we cannot make and uh, being an army officer many times i also get this kind of question is sir is this going to be a military based training or is it going to be a that kind of a level training you cannot make someone a commando in 3 days obviously not yeah. i mean that's yeah. not a focus and there are children yeah. that okay. they should learn everything in a fun way than than uh, anything in a fearful way and when we talk about <laughs> the basic objective of taking out every single fear of a child mind they should not be afraid of something when it comes to camp atmosphere so that is what we entirely focus on uh, right. achieving the basic and the foremost objective of taking out every single fear of the child thank you so much thank you so much captain for letting us know this and uh, we also have one question from the audience from sarita shukla that does profos co collaborate with schools too for creating awareness regarding sports and making the children more inclined towards sports Okay, so what Profos does is we collaborate with schools. We try and understand their infrastructure. We try and understand the kind of focus that they would want to probably keep for sports for the academic year. Uh, we provide them with the national coaches, which are under the umbrella. So they are referred to us from federation, from our ex-servicemen fraternity, or otherwise. Uh, we provide them all the equipment also for the basic play, and uh, we generally build the schools. So it's a B two B model to be very specific. We generally build the schools which parents do not get to know. And uh, when a child starts performing at the level, say district and state and all, that is where we start talking mm -hmm. to parents that we can take up the career of this child from right. this particular level to next. Right. Very true. Thank you so much. I guess Sarita Shukla's question is well answered. And then we have uh, some more questions uh, from the back end. Uh, first thing is you mentioned about digital detox. So it itself is such a serious word because we know with the uh, growing technology and its pros and cons, we cannot curb or seize our kids from entering into the digital world. It has its curse and boons both. So when you say digital detox, um uh, what does come into it and if we want to follow if the parents want to follow it at home level do you have any tips for it okay uh so let's let's probably say two different things from camp level to home level right so from camp level we all are i mean we, it is mandatory not to carry anything even if somebody yeah. carries a phone or a camera or even for that matter a digital watch we confiscate yeah. that and keep it with ourselves right and give it back yeah. on the second Right. It is a mandatory behavior instill. You cannot instill that kind of a mandatory behavior all 365 days. Right. When you are manual, right? This is one of the Absolutely. basic Absolutely. One thing that I would really want uh, all the parents here to ask themselves is, firstly, are you really limiting yourselves from your own technology uh, use? I mean, how much time you are glued to your screen? How much time are you using your cell phones with? Uh, are you setting up an example to your children before even going ahead and telling them that they should be away from a digital screen, whether it's TV or phone or anything and like, are you setting up an example? Because these are the kids, they are exposed to so many things rightly and they have uh, probably, uh, I would say 100x capability more to do a selection of their mentor. They would have 10 more figures in their mind when they got to listen to someone. So if you Absolutely. got to stand up in, uh, amongst those 10 as a parent, you cannot just forcefully tell them as a parent that this is right and this is wrong. You'll have to probably set up an example. So if I, if I got to practice at home, probably practice some of the things like keeping your cell phones at silent 24 by 7 so that you don't rush to every single message tone or every single uh, ringtone. Yeah. Uh, 
probably uh, setting up a uh, uh, use of limiting technology to 9:30 10 o'clock at night and probably switching off your phone trust me i have been practicing this for last 8 years now and nothing wow. i have not lost anything my cell phone gets switched off at 10 o'clock sharp every night come what may and will get switched off at 5:30 in the morning so all 7 8 hours nobody disturbs me uh from parents also know what is the emergency line to dial dial to but otherwise nothing initially it was difficult yes because then people expect you to be online people expect you to be responding continuously but slowly i think within one two three weeks everybody starts adopting and when your children will see you doing the same thing slowly they will also start following the same so parents do not preach but practice this is what captain is saying but yeah you are very right that uh, we somehow overlook this fact that we are completely indulged in our technological world may it be the watching web series binging them or our mobile phones absolutely so it is we uh, who need to take care first and then we have to preach and tell it to our kids sometimes enjoying it like a family and all is still good but yeah. in case we are talking about all 365 days i think it will it will need a lot of self practice first before setting up an example to them yeah very right very right and then there's a basic question which says that how to encourage kids towards healthy mind and how to like train them to follow basic routine and discipline at home <laughs> i can i i guess the uh, answer lies in the very uh, the, the previous question uh, that i answered you cannot encourage you cannot teach them to follow healthy mind what is a healthy mind at that of it's a healthy atmosphere are we creating a healthy atmosphere around us first are we ourselves that optimistic are we breaking down to our challenges what kind of examples are we setting in front of them when it comes to challenges are we showing a tense face when we are faced with the challenges when they are in front of us what do they what are they learning and and trust me i mean the child right from age of 1 year to 18 19 years they are learning continuously from their parent before they are exposed to every single world outside possible the maximum learning that happens at home so it it's a very conscious effort avni you cannot really train a healthy mind or you cannot train children to have a healthy mind it comes to uh, probably setting up a discipline like getting up at every morning at a specific time are you yeah. yourself getting up uh, half an hour before that are you yourself setting up when and when it comes to that uh, uh, i i come across many excuses like oh come on captain it was a weekend it's a saturday or sunday so uh, what kind this of routine are you this is what i do this is what i do <laughs> what kind of routine are you setting up for yourself first and what kind of routine are you setting up for your kids because they would follow the same thing that they would have seen all those years that yeah so basically setting up a good routine would it would help from it. us it starts yeah, from yeah, us yeah. and it would in be very I basic want... and very feasible also absolutely absolutely in case i want my child to probably go out every morning in the some exercise in case i want my child to go out play some sports that i should be encouraging you know i should probably be setting up that kind of example for him so that he knows okay my dad does or my mom does the same and that is what i got to do the same thank you so much and uh, there's one question which is uh, which says that ki what kind of life skills are being uh, taught or being experienced at camp atmosphere so uh, camp atmosphere would focus on all 26 life skills that we talked about the majority of them would be a team play determination persistence perseverance a will to get up every morning come what may setting up a discipline responsibility acceptance of failure and still overcoming all those fears are, are the majority things that we talk about overcoming every single challenge the most important uh, i would say a uh, uh, aspect that we put on, put forth in them is everything looks challenging in the beginning but when you start going on it with the mindset that there is no going back you come over it i mean you get over it and at the end of it all you have is a lot of confidence to take back home that you did this and you are now setting up So let me tell you, Avni, when we launch our level basic level camps and level two camps, uh, level two camps uh, that we have launched for April and May uh, are more than ninety percent booked in Jan itself. That is, those are the challenges those participants are looking forward for after doing a level one. So that is yeah. what they are focusing on. That when is the level two getting launched? When is the level three going ahead? 
and i guess and we have got one example here only uh, priya pawar mahadik has written my girl too was an extrovert but the credit goes to detox uh, for those three days that happened to attend the level 1 camp and shall owe it to captain amay kochrekar thanks a lot ma'am thanks a lot yeah and there's one more question captain uh, by sarita shukla what food or moment restrictions do you have in camps what would what food or food. movement restrictions do you have in the camps uh, interestingly there are no food or movement restrictions so from food size we cater to all kind of food whether it's veg non veg and then all cook separately so separately but we ensure that the, that should probably be going ahead with the kids taste more becoming i mean rather making it less spicy or something like that movement restrictions uh, trust me uh, the simple rule of army training that applies here and this is what we follow at camp ethos we are if we don't keep them busy they'll keep us busy so there are continuous activities happening and uh, the kind of rest that is given during two hours and so they look forward to it in the in the afternoon hour so that they can probably uh, what you can say rejuvenate themselves and rest, rest and recoup for the next level challenges uh, not even the single incidence of somebody trying to move around in uh, unauthorized area anywhere and the way i said is everywhere is uh, all our instructors are always around come what may for any such kind of so we follow a uh, uh, instructor to student ratio of 1 is to 10 in such camp that is where again one differentiation with camp ethnos where happens is uh, behind every 10 students there is always one mentor standing with uh, to take care of so that we every single child is being looked after now that we have listened and uh, you have said almost everything uh, about camp atmosphere uh, we see many parents asking about it the sudha hunar again messaging that uh, what is the month and date of the camp okay we will be putting it uh, in the comment section the date uh, and uh, the you can put all the dates and uh, yeah, all the dates and contact details uh, we will be putting it in the comments so that uh, parents get to know about it and now you said everything and i'm feeling so bad that my kids are just four and i cannot send them to the camp Okay, these kind of questions also come to us. Okay, they are just five, but I think they'll do away. Yeah, It's not yeah. about age group and all. Uh, uh, we rather do not want so many young kids. I mean, such a young kid to be going away from parents even for a night. Once they are six or seven years and all, I think that's a time that we can start training them. Thank you so much, Captain. Thank you for this insightful session, for letting us My know pleasure. that such curated camps exist. and uh, looking forward that more parents are interested and here sarita shukla says wow sir it was a beautiful and definitely an insightful session thank you so much so thanks a lot for that uh, thank you so much on the behalf of team story scrappers on the behalf of our parents and audience and yes we are looking forward that more parents join you in this uh, i would say this trend of detox digital detox <laughs> <laughs> let's 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 hope for the best and the way i said is you cannot preach the next generation now you cannot Absolutely. just just being a being being a set of parents you cannot just tell them you have to probably set up an online exam very right very so, right so. thank you so much we are glad thanks that we could have you and it's sure our pleasure so thanks a lot, thanks a lot. captain thank Wish you all so much nice evening right and uh, we will be putting all the details in the comment section so that uh, parents get touch in with you perfect thanks a lot Thank you so much a big thank you to our audience for joining in thanks a lot have a great evening thank you